Welcome back, everyone. We're now several days into the celebration of the Muslim holiday of Ramadan, and for some reason, some people have connected that to calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. Overseas to the war in Gaza, as more than 2 million people there prepare to mark the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, and there's still no ceasefire in sight between Hamas and Israel. Look, going. this is day one of Ramadan. Going into this holy month for Muslims, there was a, a question that now seems naive of whether that might provide some momentum for a ceasefire in Gaza for an easing of tensions, uh, maybe even for more humanitarian aid to be brought in. Clearly, the answer is no. Good morning. Today marks the start of the holy month of Ramadan, a period when Muslims around the world celebrate and spread the values of peace, reconciliation, and solidarity. Yet, even through Ramadan, even though Ramadan has begun, the killing bombing and bloodshed continue in Gaza. I want to see a ceasefire, and I'm starting with a major, major exchange of prisoners for a six-week period. We're going into Ramadan. It should be nothing happening. There must be an immediate ceasefire for at least the next six weeks. That's right, brilliant people everywhere in the English-speaking world have increased their calls for a ceasefire with Hamas out of respect for the Muslim holiday. Now, this seems odd because there was no respect for the holiest day in Judaism during the Yom Kippur War or apparently for Ramadan either that year since it was being celebrated at the same time. About 50 years later, during another Jewish holiday, Simchat Torah, the joy of the Torah, Hamas brutalized Israeli civilians with sadistic violence on October 7th. But never mind all that. We're still supposed to respect Muslim holidays. And some would like to pretend that, during Ramadan, Islamic terrorists are different. Thus, we're supposed to respect Ramadan so that Islamic terror groups can spread love, joy, and peace uninhibited. I wonder if that would sound more convincing with lullaby music. We should all respect Muslim holidays so that Islamic terror groups can spread love, joy, and peace uninhibited. But is that really what Islamic terrorists do during Ramadan? From March 7th, the U.S. says Hamas is still holding up a six-week ceasefire by refusing to release vulnerable hostages. Biden officials insist deal still possible amid deadlock. Revealed truce will let civilians return to North Gaza. Add, there's no hard deadline, but want agreement before Ramadan, of course. Hamas refuses to release the sick, elderly, and female hostages that it's holding in Gaza. Not releasing hostages is a common theme for Hamas. Back in February, Hamas rejected an Israeli offer to free all hostages taken into the Gaza Strip in exchange for the release of 1,500 Palestinians from Israeli prisons. We're not exactly sure what exchange rate that would be since we don't know how many hostages Hamas has, but some estimates I've seen are just over 100 still alive. But again, we don't know how many hostages remain because as of several days ago, Hamas leadership still couldn't give us any numbers. Islamic terrorists blow up their own hospital and they instantly know how many are killed. It's amazing. Day by day, almost hour by hour, Hamas terrorists seem to know death tolls with mind-boggling precision, though they can't seem to count live hostages too well. But all indications are this is how Hamas terrorists will spend their Ramadan, abusing hostages they can't even count, and using them, along with their stupid holiday, as leverage against Western morons to get Israel to stop from completely spanking them and embarrassing Allah even more. But Hamas isn't the only Islamic terrorist organization to celebrate Ramadan in this fashion. Let's turn now to Nigeria. In very recent news, jihadists kidnapped scores of children in Nigeria. Officials give varying estimates of how many people were taken as the Chibuk anniversary approaches. Local officials were going tent to tent in makeshift refugee camps asking who was missing. Parents rushed into the forest in search of their children. And the small number of girls and boys who escaped recounted how gunmen took away their friends, forcing them to walk deeper into the bush. For many Nigerians, the scenes playing out this week in the town of Ngala on their country's northeastern border with Cameroon were a painful reminder of the 2014 abductions of more than 200 schoolgirls who were snatched by Islamist militants from their dormitories in the town of Chibuk. That kidnapping, which sparked the global Bring Back Our Girls movement, another staggering example of Western ignorance about Islamic Jihad, that kidnapping will hit its 10th anniversary next month, with 98 of the Chibuk girls as they came to be known still in captivity or dead.
The experience of the Chibuk girls and other children taken by Nigerian jihadists suggests that the boys and girls kidnapped from Ingala have a difficult road ahead of them. Abducted girls were often forced to marry their captors while boys were conscripted to fight for the group. Others were strapped into suicide vests to attack civilians or soldiers. They are likely to be enslaved, possibly for years and they will be sexually exploited. There have been several recent large-scale kidnappings in Nigeria, and it's difficult to keep them and their Islamic terror groups straight, but in general it's safe to assume that the Boko Haram and Fulani jihadis, to the extent that there's a relevant distinction between the two, like Hamas, are going to spend their Ramadan violating yet another batch of an unknown number of freshly taken hostages. Also, I have exclusive reports that the Palestinian terrorists were contracted to count the hostages for the Nigerian terrorists. However, Hamas was unable to count those hostages any better than they can count their own. But is the phenomenon of terrorists behaving extra badly during the sacred month of Ramadan new? Nah. There's a trend. Here's an example from Ramadan 2016. The end of the month of fasting brings special relief. Now, why would you need special relief from a holiday, especially a month-long one? Because ISIS turned Ramadan a time of prayer, charity, and self-restraint into a month of terror. The terror group used Ramadan as a rallying cry for violence from Turkey to Bangladesh, Baghdad to Medina. Not much has changed since 2016 or ever apparently since during this Ramadan. Islamic terror groups are at it again, ratcheting things up. This brings us back to the region in which we started, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Try saying that and see if it doesn't leave a bad taste in your mouth. Palestinian Islamic Jihad, in addition to blowing up its own hospitals, is calling for Ramadan to be a month of terror, which is supposedly different from every other month, I guess, and seeks to escalate attacks in the West Bank and Gaza. In a recent speech, Abu Hamza, the spokesman for the Palestinian Islamic Jihad's Al-Quds Brigades, said he wants Arab countries in the region and pro-Iranian groups to continue to unify various arenas, and fronts against Israel. A note to all the Ramadan ceasefire morons out there. Ramadan is a time of the year when Muslim terrorists continue doing what they were doing or they intensify it. Let me put that more simply. Ramadan is a time of the year when Muslim terrorists continue being Muslim terrorists. Now let me put it even more simply for any BBC fans who may be watching Islamic terrorists before Ramadan, Islamic terrorists during Ramadan, Islamic terrorists after Ramadan. This year is no different. Islamic terrorists from Nigeria to Gaza are spending their sacred holidays waging jihad and abusing hostages, among other things. The only difference is that Hamas terrorists have the sympathies and support of many Western idiots for reasons I've explained in detail in other videos. And that's why we hear increasing calls for ceasefire in Gaza, because, you know, Ramadan, precisely the time when many Islamic terror groups do what they do best. Stop thinking about holidays in Western terms. Ramadan's a celebration of the Quran, which is the most authoritative book in Islam that demands jihad. How else would jihadis celebrate it? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.